Electromagnetic induction is one of my favorite topics in physics. It has some of the nicest, most amazing demonstrations and a lot of important applications to real life. We'll talk about motional EMF, we'll talk about magnetic flux, the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Michael Faraday is said to have said when someone asked him why his experiments uh, were, what was the practical use of his experiments? And his answer was, what is the use of a newborn baby? He was doing these experiments, and we'll show you some of them uh, in demos, that would seem to have no practical importance, but that would be absolutely wrong. So a lot of times science is when you first do the science, you don't know what the applications can be. But then once you understand nature better, then you find those applications and it does become relevant. Just like a newborn baby becomes relevant. The, uh, we'll talk about electrical generators, uh, inductance. Uh, there are inductors inside of your computer. Uh, and transformers, which are used to change the voltage from high voltage power supply to low voltage when it's alternating current. So first, the motional EMF. Just one concept in this section. Here's the idea. If you have a conducting rod, colored blue here, and moving to the right. So this is its velocity. It's a, it's a rod moving to the right like this. There's a magnetic field that's directed into the screen. So this is in. And we ask about the magnetic force on the charges in this rod. Well, there's a magnetic force on, if you take a little positive charge right here, think of it as a positive charge. We can do the same thing with negative. But uh, the magnetic force is if if you have this charge moving to the right with velocity v, then we can put our thumb in the direction of the velocity and then orient our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which is in. So we're going to have to go back like that. And the palm of the hand gives the direction of the force on that positive charge, which is in this direction. So that's the direction of the magnetic force on a positive charge. A negative charge. And, and we, we know now that in, in metals, positive charges don't move, they're stuck. But negative charges, electrons, do move. That force on that negative charge will be just in the opposite direction. So what's going to happen, ultimately, is that the electrons in this end of the rod are going to get depleted, leaving positive charge left over. And the electrons are going to end up on this end of the rod. Well, what that does is then there's a, an electric field that's created by that charge movement inside of the rod. And what is the direction of that electric field? Well, the electric field points, uh, begins on positive charge and ends on negative charge. So we must have an electric field that's in that direction. Well, that is the source of the motional EMF. And so uh, the, first I, the, the first concept in the chapter is to actually derive this motional EMF. A couple of steps. So the, the magnetic force on that positive charge particle, if you might remember, um, the magnetic force is Q, magnitude of the charge, times V, times B, times the sine of the angle, theta. And that's the angle between V and B. Here's V. B is into the screen. The angle is 90. Sine of 90 is 1. So this is the magnetic force on that uh, charge. But we've created an electric field that's in the opposite direction. It also exerts a force on charges. And that force, and this is, uh, if you want to go back and double check that Q, V, B, sine theta, it's concept 21-4. We also have an electric force 
on charged particles. This is the magnetic force here, and this is the electric force. If you go back to concept 1811, you'll find that definition of that electric force is Q times E. And, and then if you go back to concept 19-9, there's a relationship between the electric field and the voltage difference across a distance. The electric field is minus the change in voltage divided by delta S. So delta V over delta S with a minus sign out in front. So that electric field is a voltage divided by a distance. And uh, we're going to denote that voltage as a script E, the EMF. And that is the actual motional EMF that we're looking to calculate. It's measured in volts. It's just an EMF like a battery. So you can think about the movement. Of the, the curious thing about this is that all you have to do is move that metal rod through a magnetic field, and all of a sudden you've got a battery out of the deal. You've got something that can drive some current. And so if this is an equilibrium, if it's traveling at a constant speed, B, then these two forces will balance each other out, and we can set them equal to each other. So I'm going to set QVB, that's, a, that's this piece right here, equal to QE, but I've already rewritten QE as Q uh, script E over L. That's this. And then I'm interested in that motional EMF, this guy here. And to, to solve this equation for the script E, I need to multiply both sides by L, and I need to divide both sides by Q. The Qs cancel each other. And the L comes up here, and this is the result for the motional EMF. The motional EMF is the speed, V, times the magnitude of the magnetic field, times L, which is the length of this bar that's moving. And you can think of this EMF as if it were a battery. Uh, speed of the conductor, the magnetic field magnitude, and this is for, this whole derivation is valid for a velocity, magnetic field, and a bar that are mutually perpendicular to each other. So the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field. The bar is perpendicular to the velocity and the magnetic field. But this is the only case that we'll be concerned with in the class. So if you actually take this bar and put it along some conducting rails, so these black lines here and here are supposed to denote, say, wires or pieces of aluminum or something, and then you move this bar along it, then what you're going to get is positive charge accumulated up here, negative charges accumulated down there, and a current driven as if this were a battery. So you can think about this as a battery with a positive terminal on this side, the negative terminal on this side, which will drive current in this direction, and you could, you could power a light bulb. Well, so so uh, let's, let's actually do an example. A rod of length 1.6 meters moves with a speed of 5 meters per second perpendicular to a 0.8 Tesla magnetic field. And we have a light bulb with a resistance of 96 ohms. Find the EMF produced by the rod and the current induced in the rod. So let's go back here. The EMF is V times B times L. So that's this. We know V, we know B, we know L, we multiply them together and we get a 6.4 volt EMF. What's an EMF? You might be saying, an EMF is just a voltage. 
but the EMF is, is a special name for a voltage created, induced by motion in this particular case. And we know through Ohm's law that V equals IR, if you want to find the current, and you know that the voltage is a script E, the EMF, equals IR, then we can divide by R on both sides to get that the current is E over R. So there's our EMF, here's our resistance, and we get a very a small but not negligible current in the conductor. The magnetic field exerts a force on a moving wire segment. In order to keep the rod moving at a constant velocity, you have to push on that rod. There's going to be some resistance to motion. And this is the so-called back EMF, or, and we'll talk a lot about that in this chapter. But you've got to push on it with your hand in order to, um, to balance out the force that that is exerted. That force is, um, I didn't write down the concept number, but it's a force on a moving, um, on a current carrying wire. And we have a current in the wire in this direction, and we have, so we'll put our thumb in the direction of the current, put our fingers of the right hand in the direction of the magnetic field, which is into the board, into the, um, and the out of the palm is the direction of the force on that current carrying wire. That's this one here, pointing to the left. So that force has to be counterbalanced by the force of your hand. What I'm trying to point out here is that you don't get, you can't get something for nothing. Perpetual motion machines just don't work. You can't get something for nothing. And it's like we're getting this energy to power this light bulb, but where did the energy come from in the first place? Well, it comes from your hand pushing on that uh, bar, conducting bar, to keep it going. 